What's up guys, Salty Diver here. The weather has officially changed here in Olympia and I have been sick for the past few days because of it, so I apologize if my voice is a little raspy. With Thanksgiving coming up this week and everybody getting ready to get down on some holiday binge eating, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about fitness and diving. As commercial divers, it would be asinine for us to overlook the importance that our bodies play in our job. You could say our bodies are like our most important tool. And just like with any other piece of equipment, if you take care of it, it will take care of you. In commercial dive school, you'll get a little bit on human physiology, but most likely, fitness will be completely eliminated from your coursework. That's because dive schools are required to give you a base level of knowledge of what happens to the body whenever it's under pressure. Also, you're going to get some information on the basic diving illnesses. What they're probably not going to teach you is how important your cardiovascular fitness is to your diving career. So the encompassing idea behind diving physiology is that whenever you breathe a gas under pressure, some of that gas gets dissolved into your bloodstream. All these gas exchanges happen in small sacs in the lungs called alveoli. Being as most of the time you're diving, you're going to be breathing air, you get a lot more nitrogen dissolved into the bloodstream than normal. The problem is that once you have all this extra nitrogen in your bloodstream, it takes time for that nitrogen to disperse back out to the body and that's in a process that we call off-gassing. If there's too much nitrogen in your system at pressure and you don't allow enough time for that nitrogen to off-gas before you surface, due to the effects of Boyle's Law, that nitrogen will actually expand in your bloodstream, which is the cause of all diving-related injuries. There are several factors that can increase and decrease your susceptibility to a diving-related illness. So today I wanted to go over a couple of things that are going to increase your susceptibility to diving related illness and I'm going to give you one main thing to reduce your susceptibility. The first liability I'm going to list is obesity. As a person becomes obese, their total blood volume increases to supply adequate perfusion to the extra adipose tissue. So it then logically follows that with increased blood supply, you have more volume for that extra nitrogen to dissolve in. With this increased amount of dissolved nitrogen, you also greatly increase your chance of having a diving related illness. The second liability I'm going to list should be pretty obvious, and it's smoking. Come on, you knew it was coming, right? Whenever you smoke, all that lovely tar coats the alveoli in your lungs, making that gas exchange harder. Meaning that as you ascend in the water column, it's harder for your body to off-gas that dissolved nitrogen. Also, whenever you smoke, you inhale increased levels of carbon monoxide. And fun fact, carbon monoxide actually bonds more readily to available hemoglobin molecules than oxygen does. So whenever you smoke and you're a diver, you're effectively displacing your source of life. Okay, you caught me. I've been a smoker myself. I loathe all tobacco companies and their unrelenting grip on me. Also, I don't condone tobacco use at all. Seriously, I have one major regret in my life, and that is starting smoking. If I can't convince you not to use tobacco at all, I'm going to give you a little piece of advice that was given to me by a Chief Marine Recon Corpsman. You gotta put that shit in your lip. The final thing I want to touch on is a good way to help prevent a diving related illness. Can you guess what it is? If you guessed good cardiovascular health, you were right. Whenever you have a healthy cardiovascular system, your body works much more efficiently. If you were to take an average American and a marathon runner, and take their base resting vital signs, you would immediately notice a difference. A marathon runner will have a decreased resting heart rate and resting respiration rate. I don't mean like decreased, I mean much lower than normal. That's because their bodies are conditioned in such a way as to allow an easier gas exchange in the lungs. Having good cardiovascular fitness means that your body doesn't have to work so hard to just keep you alive, which is pretty neat. Additionally, if you're an inland diver like me, you're going to be finning in some pretty fast water. It's super easy to get out of breath and overbreathe your rig. Overbreathing is what happens whenever you are breathing faster than the hat can actually provide. It's happened to me, it feels like you're suffocating, and it sucks. If you're looking to start getting in shape, then there's a ton of resources out there for you. My favorite is the Navy Special Warfare Physical Training Guide. How much you ask? It's free. In fact, I've linked it in the description for you to use. I'm sure you see a lot of Navy SEAL workouts sold to you, and for good reason. They're the best at what they do. 
But why would you pay some guy claiming to be a SEAL hundreds of dollars whenever the U.S. Navy gives you their training for free? And what makes it so good is that it's not only going to take you from zero to a thousand in cardiovascular health, but it also offers strength training and nutritional information. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, like it, share it with all your friends. If you want to see more, subscribe. And as always, stay salty. You have a happy Thanksgiving.